Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I, my question is about a hadith. It is Ibn Abi Hanifa, Muslim, 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 uh, may Allah have mercy on her soul. She said that women should, um, in the prayer, uh, prayer would wear a veil and uh, should wear a shirt that is long enough to um, cover her feet. Mm, and this hadith is um, graded daif mawkuf by Albani. May Allah have mercy on him too. And I personally believe that covering feet uh, while praying for women is mandatory, but sometimes people come and ask me, why are you doing this? Then when I say to them uh, that this is mandatory uh, by some, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, this is mandatory, and I show this hadith, they say that um, this is daif and they don't believe me. Now I want to know why we uh, believe that this is mandatory when the hadith is weak. Is this the only hadith you know of? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me check because I am not a hafiz who can uh, memorize these. Um, uh, the issue of Covering the feet in Salat is an issue of dispute. The Hanafi school of thought and some scholars say that it is not mandatory. The majority say that it is mandatory uh, to cover the uh, feet. And this is awrah according to the Malikis and the Shafi'is. And this is the school of thought of Hanabila that they uh, um, uh, chose. And some of the Hanafi school of uh, thought. Now, whether the hadith you're referring to is authentic or not, I don't know because I have to check the authenticity of it and what the scholars have graded it by. But definitely, it is not the only hadith. For example, the hadith and which all agree that when a woman reaches puberty in Salat, she has to cover everything except the face and the hands. The feet are not mentioned. And they, the vast majority of scholars agree upon this. So when we come to such verdicts of schools of thought and we don't have the time to check for hadiths or references having it as the vast majority is sufficient nevertheless if you have time you have to go and scroll and look and search and you will find evidences that instruct women to cover in salat and outside of the salat because if you say that a woman's feet are not to be covered what we notice today in the haram, we see this. We see women walking with their shin exposed, not only their feet. So is it only the foot itself to the ankles or some of part of the leg as well? We see women not paying attention, not caring in Salat or outside of the Salat. This is why we say that we have to go and choose what is safer for a person. Whenever, and this is a side note, whenever we talk about covering the face, is the face aura or not, we say to them, look around you. Countries that used to cover the face had no problem with fitna of tabarruj, showing the hair, showing the neck, showing the arms. Because the moment a strand of hair appeared, everybody said, cover, cover, this is haram, this is this and that. While countries that had only the face covered felt tempted to show a little bit of the hair. The resistance is far less than when the full body is covered. And little by little, this is what's happening now in Muslim countries. Women now 
in even conservative countries don't care about covering their hair, their necks, their part of their chest, their arms. They're adorning themselves, makeup. Is this Islam? Nobody dares to say, no, it's not Islam. But at the same time, everybody's doing it. So this is why Islam surrounds the areas of haram with lots of high fences. If you pass one, you'll find another one and a third and a fourth. But if all the fences are down, then everything is exposed and you fell into the hardcore, hardcore haram, which Allah Azza wa Jal prohibited and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.